Hi, my name is Stephanie Lomelli, and today we're going to go over how to do custom and depression trays for maxillary and mandibular complete dentures. We will go step by step going from the preliminary impression, what steps you need to do in order to prepare for your master impression. Okay, so initially when you have a cast, you're gonna be starting with your preliminary impression. This is an already trimmed cast. But when you first have your class, it's gonna be very uh, raw and large and you'll have to trim it down quite a bit. Now on this pre-trimmed cast, a few important features to take note of on this maxillary edentulous cast is you have here is your residual ridge. You have your rugae here, your median palatal suture, your incisive papilla will be right here. Now, in addition to that, you have the slope, the labial slope of the residual ridge, your buccal slopes of your residual ridge, and here is your vestibule. Now, within the vestibule, you have little mountains. Now, those are called frenulum. Okay, so here we have a roughly three millimeter flat area that is called your land area. All of these features are key features in developing your complete denture and being able to familiarize yourself with the terminology. Now, for this particular course, you're going to want to have the land area be roughly three millimeters, okay? Um, in some areas, it is larger, just on this cast, but you wanna try to get it as close as possible to three millimeters. So as you can see on this cast, we have it a lot closer, okay? So, um, Another key feature that you want to look for is that from the depth of your vestibule, so that's not the edge, but that's going at the very center where it's the deepest, you want it to be two millimeters thick. Um, and you want, if you are looking from the depth of the vestibule, so perhaps I can zoom it in, you wanna be able to be two millimeters, right? So you also don't, you wanna hold it upright. You don't wanna slant, cause see how that looks closer to three? That really alters your perception. But if you look at it coming from this way, you can see that it's roughly two millimeters. So we're looking at the one millimeter mark and then the two millimeter mark disappears. Can you see that? Okay, now another thing that students commonly make an error on in addition to slanting is that they'll use the soft flexible ruler and if you look you can slant this any which way so it really alters your perception of how deep and what happens when you do that you end up with really really shallow vestibule okay um let's see if i have an example so you can see here it's almost blown out a bit, okay? Um, another reason you wanna have um, thicker areas is because they can tend to fracture, okay? Now, with that, the main reason you want it to be two millimeters in thickness is because on our next step, when you do record bases, you'll have to cure it just as you cure the custom impression trays. All of the steps that we'll be doing today will translate seemingly, uh, seamlessly to the next step in doing record bases. In fact, the materials that we'll be using are almost exactly alike. The only difference is that one of the materials shown here is clear. So we have a clear material here, okay? Now, when you take that apart, anytime you're not using it, you wanna keep it in the bag, because it does cure. And 
The other material for the second step or your second test will be pink. And so this is supposed to simulate what a denture base will look like. So as you can see, very similar materials. Test one, test two. Okay, so mastering, if you are able to master your custom impression trace today, you'll be able to do exceptionally well on your record bases on next test. Now, just to give you an idea of what those record bases will look like, so those will come all the way to the edge, as opposed to today's, where we'll be going slightly short. Okay, so key differences to make note of. So for here, you want to make sure that you are two millimeters higher than the vestibule. Now, when you do that, we can come over here and we're going to make markings, okay? Now, keep in mind on the test, you're going to have to be doing this quite fast. Speed is gonna be a major issue here. So, one way to think about it is you have key features here. The frenula that you have to be high around. So if you choose dots at each height, so right in front at the height of it and right on the side, and you do that to each one, you can also add a few dots in the middle. And then you can connect them. Right, so we're all developing our hand skills. So being able to connect the dots rather than making continuous hash marks, which people commonly do, um, and it wastes a lot of time. So by placing only a few markers, you're able to save a significant amount of time. So I'll show you what that means. So here I'm placing it at the depth of the vestibule. And so you really have to eyeball it. So if you look at how I am, I'm coming down and I'm looking at it at eye level. Make sure to do your yoga poses because you're gonna need to incorporate a little flexibility at this point, right? So I'm putting my mark right on the outer limit. I'm gonna come and put my mark, holding it at the very height, two millimeters, okay? And then I'm gonna come to the outer edge and mark it two millimeters. Okay, now this has a thin layer because we've already practiced on this several times. So it has a thin layer of MRA, so it might not mark as well. And then now I'm coming to the next frenula. Again, two millimeters. Two millimeters. And two millimeters. Okay. Now, see how slow it is just with me placing, all I placed is six, six marks, right? Imagine placing several, right? Very time consuming, okay? But even with these, now, so we have these six, you can place an additional two here. Okay, and so what that will allow you to do is to essentially, Maybe a little challenging with the MRA. Essentially freehand it. Now, you hear how I'm saying it's a little challenging with the MRA, which is why it's essential that this is your very first step. Once you put the MRA, it will be extremely challenging, if not um, impossible, to be able to do your pencil mark. Your pencil mark will just wipe off, okay? Um, so we're just going to freehand it. Now, understandable that maybe on your test, you're not gonna be able to do this right off the bat, but that's where practice comes into play, okay? okay. You wanna keep your marking as dark, but also as neat as possible, okay? And then, let's 
See how I'm applying very soft pressure? Almost doing like a tracing. Okay. And so you'll essentially continue that until you have something that looks about this way. Okay. And so for this example, I actually use this cast several times in live demos. So thank you for everybody who goes to the live demos of these, which are also very helpful. Um, so in this video demonstration, we'll use that the same cast. Now, one of the benefits of it being so dark is that once you place the triad material, can you see how you can see right through it? So you know exactly where your dark mark is, as opposed to when it is very lightly, it's a, it's a little bit harder to see. Okay, so maybe you don't need it as dark as this. This is only this dark really because I've used it for multiple demos. Okay, so maybe just ever so slightly darker than what's on here will be sufficient. Okay. Okay. So you'll do the two millimeters all the way around the facial and buccal surfaces. Now on the palatal, you will be going from wrapping around the maxillary tuberosities um, where the um, pterygo palatine notches and you'll be coming straight across from there. Now, similar modifications will be made on the maxillary, mandibular cast. So on the mandibular cast, a few key features. You have your residual ridge. Here you have the labial slope, your buccal shelf, okay, because it's flatter. You have your lingual slope, and this is going to be considered your lingual sulcus, okay? And this will be your distal lingual, okay? Key um, terminology to be aware of. Now, when we're talking about the distolingual surface, you are going to be coming down at a 90 degree angle. Okay, do you see that? Coming straight down and straight across. Now, that's going to be slightly different than your buckle shelf. Now for that, you'll be coming right about um, at a 45 degree angle into it and you're going to be, see how I'm right at the depth of it? Okay, so you're not gonna have that two millimeters up because it's a very, very flat surface, okay? So you'll be right into it and once you add that two millimeters, really that's gonna be adding the distance from the depth of the vestibule to the cheek, okay? Okay, so we'll be using base plate wax for two particular things. One will be block out, the other relief wax. Now, block out wax will go in any area where there is an undercut. So you wanna think about it as any other area where essentially your custom impression tray or your record base would become trapped, essentially creating an area that would uh, not allow you to take off the tray or possibly break the master um, cast. Uh, so those areas tend to be on the blackout blockout wax specifically. Um, it will be on the labial surfaces, okay, um, and particularly prominent in some casts. So here will be the labial as well. Every cast will vary. Now, relief wax will tend to go in areas where maybe the mucosa is a bit thinner. So you don't wanna put as much pressure in those areas. So allowing there to be a slight amount of wax will essentially simulate that pressure distribution that mucosa would create. So you wanna think about the areas that are very thin of mucosa uh, and very bony prominent. So that's going to be your retromolar pad here. Okay. And then on your maxillary, you're gonna have your 
maxillary tuberosities here, your incisive papilla, your rugae here, as well as your median palatal suture. All very prominent bony areas. So another key thing about this wax is you want to put the absolute minimum that is necessary. So you want to be very conservative with this. The idea of a custom impression tray is you want to get as close and as tight of a fit as possible. So again, this is something that can be done very quickly. So a little, and we'll bring it down. You want to put it on the retromolar pad area, minimally, the labial slope, and you want to, most importantly, make sure that you don't cross over and put any onto the residual ridge crest. The same will be here, minimally on the labial, none on the residual, the crest of the residual ridge, incisive papilla, on the rugae, down the medium palatal suture, suture and on the min maxillary tuberosity. The next thing you want to do is apply model releasing agent or MRA. So grab a generous amount and start to apply it to one cast everywhere. Um, this first layer is definitely not a layer to be shy with it. You can wipe off any excess later. Okay. Now, after you apply a generous amount, you want to leave it so it'll air dry for two minutes. Now, during that two minute period, you can start on the opposite cast. So you want to constantly be jumping back and forth and doing them simultaneously. You'll end up saving a lot of time. Now you'll let it air dry for two minutes. 